Good afternoon. I'm honored to present the joint work of HKUST and Alibaba, which focus on resource management and scheduling in the production GPU clusters. Um, the agenda will first cover the background on GPU sharing and fragmentation in machine learning clusters. The popularity of machine learning workloads has driven the development of GPU cluster that provides machine learning as a service. As shown in the figure, this platform of general architecture can satisfy users with different machine learning frameworks and support a wide range of workloads, including training, inference, and evaluation. This work focuses specifically on resource scheduling layer, which is responsible for managing ML tasks in containers, assigning them properly across the heterogeneous cluster, compromising thousands of CPU, GPU servers of diverse capacities. However, low GPU utilization is com commonly observed in such clusters, as most tasks cannot fully utilize the capability of modern GPUs. The figures illustrate the medium utilization across the nodes with two or eight GPUs, with the red and purple dotted line denote the compute and memory utilization of GPUs, which are mostly under 50%. The traces are collected from the platform of AI in Alibaba Cloud. Interest reader can refer to our paper, Machine Learning as a Service in the Wild, published at NSDI 2020-22, and other related works. A natural solution to address the low, util low GPU utilization is to share GPUs, enable multiple tasks to run on the same GPU concurrently in a, multi in a time multiplex or space multiplex manner. Related work including the framework level modification, CUDA API interception, and hardware methods like NVIDIA MIG for certain GPU types. As illustrated in the figure below, the yellow bars represent the measured GPU allocation, while the green bars are simulated results, showing that workloads could have utilized twice as many GPUs without sharing. Unfortunately, GPU sharing is not a silver bullet. We analyzed a GPU sharing cluster with over 1,000 nodes and 6,000 GPUs hosting over 8,000 tasks of Alibaba. As shown in the left figure, the solid blue line depicts the CDF of idle GPUs per node, while the dotted orange, orange line represents the GPU request per task. Over 90% nodes have fewer than one available GPU, unable to meet the demand of the around 50% tasks requiring one or more GPUs, indicating the insufficiency of GPUs. The right figure illustrates the idle CPU distribution in blue and requested CPUs per task in orange, grouped by the corresponding idle and uh, requested GPUs along the y-axis. Uh, so we can find critically on the top of the figure, tasks requesting eight idle GPUs lack sufficient available CPUs. Uh, we refer to this as a stranded GPUs, unable to schedule due to the insufficient of CPUs. Consequently, the cluster become fully allocated after assigning just 92% of the um, 92% of the GPUs wasting 500 GPUs idle. We also observed user complaints about the unexpected scheduling failures despite the sufficient GPU quotas. Our work is aimed to address such fragmentation-induced resource underutilization. So the next slide is about existing approach of packing and zero limitations. Consider a cluster with two tasks, A requiring six CPUs, 0.75 GPUs, running on node A, and task B requesting two CPUs, 0.25 GPUs, running on node B. Enable GPU sharing can downscale the task's uh, allocation from one full GPU to these partial, CPU, partial GPUs. However, if another instance of task A arrives, it cannot be placed on either node, despite one aggregated idle GPUs across the cluster. This GPU is considered as fragmentation. Workload packing can mitigate such fragmentation by consolidating task A and B onto the one node and freezing resources on the other. As a quick recap, classical bin packing workloads approaches formulate the problem as multi-resource bin packing. Resource include CPU, memory, and GPU are represented as dimensions with the task request and no capa uh, node capabilities shaped as cubes shown below or as the higher dimension vectors. Best fit, fit is a commonly used heuristic in production system like Borg in Google and assigning tasks to the nodes with the least remaining resources after allocation. Also, dot products consider the alignment of task shape request uh, compared with the node idle resource left uh, however, 
uh, formulating GPUs as a typical resource dimension in multi-dimensional beam packing is problematic. Uh, next, we will show two attempts of the formulation, and we want to demonstrate both of them fail. The first attempt is to pull one node's multiple available GPUs into a single logical GPU resources. For example, a node with uh, two ideal GPU and with 90% and 40% GPUs capacity uh, would be viewed as has 1.3 GPUs available in aggregate. However, uh, this approach fails to because two reasons. First, the task can rarely harvest CPU uh, hosted compute or memory from different GPU devices so the node can still fail to host one GPU task. Second, the unified view makes it unable to differentiate the fragmentation on individual GPUs. So about the, uh, another attempt is to model each GPU as an independent resource dimension. For example, we have a node with 16 CPUs uh, and two GPUs can be represented as a 3D ve resource vector, like zero, 16 GP CPUs, 0.9 GPUs, 0.4 GP GPUs. And however, this requests expanding the task resources correspondingly given the, the candidate node during the scheduling. Uh, let's see, a task requesting two CPUs and 0.5 GPUs can have two possible expansion on this node, either the two CPU, 0.5 GPU, zero GPU, or the two CPU, zero GPU, 0.5 GPUs. We can find if you expand the task in this way, it cannot be put onto the node. So choosing the wrong expansion can lead to the failed allocation. So inherently, this approach fails because GPUs, unlike other resources, are interchangeable. As a result, a GPU's task resource vector is deformable with respect to the available GPUs on the node, thus invalidating the conventional beam packing formulation. Therefore, we think classical beam packing formulation does not work for shared GPUs. We need a new approach to address the fragmentation problem of scheduling GPU sharing workloads. The next slide will introduce our definition of fragmentation and the scheduling strategy based on it. We hope our solution can answer these three questions. First, how to formally define the fragmentation? We have heard of fragmentation a lot of times, but we don't have a, a quantitative definition of it. The second, uh, given the definition, can we further reason the sources of the fragmentation? For example, the insufficient GPUs, the stranded GPUs, or both. How much do they contribute to the, contrib to the fragmentation? The third, can we effectively or and efficiently mitigate fragmentation? Uh, do, since the scheduler needs low latency and explainable solutions, rather than just applying machine learning text to the machine learning workloads. So uh, we first to view uh, uh, Strawman this definition, which is uh, often found in our discussion with the cluster operators. We find they usually define a fragmentation in absolute terms. Uh, they, they said a node is fragmented if and only if it cannot run any tasks. However, this absolute term can be problematic. Consider the figure below, where y axis represents the idle GPU on the node and the requested GPU of the tasks while x access, x access is for CPUs. Now, we, given this such definition, we can split the space into two parts. The non-fragmented part includes node A, and the fragment part includes node B. Uh, the A is non-fragmented because it can host task B, so it's not a fragment node. However, such definition uh, first ignores the high, de high demanding workloads. As long as A can host task B, the task D at the corner, which might be a multi-GPU or training or serving workloads, is no longer have a, any say on the node A's fragmentation. Actually, uh, these tasks on the skyline uh, has dominated the other, other tasks on, regarding the fragmentation of the node. Uh, actually, in our traces, there is the skyline task only occurs for 0.06%, and they are not uh, they are not res representative in terms of the resource demand uh, request. It's much smaller and far below the average task demand. And finally, such definition is vulnerable to small changes. For example, we consider the task C here. If it reduces its CPU alloca allocation request to become C prime, 
Now the whole skyline will dramatically change and now make all the nodes become not fragmented at all. So this is a, a bad definition, I have to say. And also, from the scheduling perspective, to examine the matrix in the scheduling, we conduct a simulation of allocating 8,000 tasks to 6,000 GPUs, as shown in the figure, uh, using the best fit and random fit policy. The x axis is the accumulated GPU demands of the arrived tasks, divided by the total capacity of GPU clusters, uh, to 120% is like uh, over uh, allocation uh, or over subscription. And we find the fragment GPUs uh, in the absolute term measure stays below 5% during all the scheduling. So such definition turns out to be overly restrictive in identifying fragmentation and fails to provide early useful feedback to the scheduling quality. Therefore, uh, this is our key contribution, we would say. We proposed our statistical measure of fragmentation, and let me introduce it to you. We consider a node in the cluster at the center of the right figure. Uh, the target tasks are distributed around it in the four quadrants, and see the one, two, three, and four. In the first and the second quadrants at the top, the tasks uh, expected to arrive cannot be allocated because its requested GPU are higher than the node's residual GPUs. So it is called the insufficient GPU. And in the fourth quadrant, at the bottom right, the tasks cannot be allocated due to the CPU shortage. So it, the GPU resources are somehow stranded by the CPU resources. And the third notably, there is some tasks allocated on the X axis, which are non-GPU tasks. We also think they contribute to the GPU fragmentation because they do not uh, really reduce the, the unallocated GPUs but instead they are consuming other non-GPU resources which can potentially lead to GPU-stranded GPU, GPU uh, in the future. So we therefore define the fragmentation as the likelihood uh, that the arriving tasks fall in the fragmented region, which approximately uh, equals to the 100% minus the popularity of the allocatable GPU, allocated tasks in the non-fragmented region which is the third quadrant in the figure. In our paper, we will provide a, a more accurate definition of the calculations that, uh, regarding how much the fragmentation is, because we do a final grant at the per GPU level. Please refer to our paper for the details. But here, for concise, we just use this definition. Uh, consequently, a node's fragmentation amount is the fragmentation rate multiplied by its residual GPU and the cluster fragment amount is the sum of all nodes fragmentation. So that's our definition. Um, this proposed statistical mass matrix can satisfy the desired properties we mentioned before, as it essentially quantifies the, in, the expected unallocated GPU resources given a target workload distribution. With this matrix, we can trace the fragmentation in various sources as shown in the right figure, which uh, which you can see, uh, the, including lack of GPUs, or lack of CPUs, so the GPU are stranded, or the X access non-GPU tasks. And based on this, we can further plot the CDF of node fragmentation rate across the whole cluster. Uh, in, this, in this figure, it shows that uh, in this cluster, uh, most of the uh, fragmentation is due to the, or, uh, the green dot, dash dotted line which means lack both CPU and GPU resources. Uh, since it is higher here, it is. Most of them are belong to the green dashed line. Uh, from the scheduling perspective, we find it quite sensitive to scheduling quality. During the allocation, the random fit policy in brown, dot, brown dashed line is on the above. Uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it will show grow, grow much faster than the other policies. Um, meanwhile, the best fit, which is the orange dashed line, is here. Uh, it's lower than the other baselines, but still a little bit higher than our proposed FGD strategy. This figure means the fragment ratio and increased from a certain value to 100%. When it reaches 100%, it means all the remaining resources are fragmented and no task can be further allocated on it. So we can see 
during the scheduling, the frame rate increased to 100%, while the remaining resources is decreasing. So their multiply, uh, does their product become uh, some uh, un undetermined value? It can increase, but uh, if it decreases, it's more often the case. Uh, in our uh, in our proposed FGD, we still enjoy the lowest frame amount of the whole cluster. So uh, it somehow shows that we, our FGD actually do some uh, fermentation minimized things. And this figure also uh, name, motivate the naming of, frame, of fermentation gradient descent. The whole process is going down, downstairs. So, uh, we will now explain the fermentation gradient descent uh, in one a more, more formal manner. We see a good scheduling is to suppress, su suppress the growth of fermentation rate as much as possible so that we can achieve this by scheduling the task towards the steepest descent of fermentation. It is a very simple heuristic. And so we propose it called FGD, gradient descent. The algorithm shows on the left, uh, it has three steps. The first step, um, it will just, after filtering out the unavailable node, it will assign a task to each node, this step, to each node, but in a hypothetical manner, it's not real. Uh, the purpose of this step is to, as a second step, to calculate the increment of fermentation, which could be negative, actually. That means the decrease of fermentation. So, for example, I put the task to node A, it increased by 40 and to B, the increase by 10, but to node C, it will decrease by 20, the frame of the node. So I will, the third step, I will choose the minimum, uh, the node causes the minimum increase of the fermentation. Note that the hypothetical assignment can be performed in a parallel uh, manner for acceleration. Therefore, in our experiment, the each decision can be made within 100 of milliseconds in a cluster with over 1,000 of nodes. Mm. So I, let me show you a running example of how FGD schedules. Consider two GPU in a cluster where one A has 0.5 GPU idle, while B is fully idle. So given task A of 0.3 GPUs, scheduling it to GPU A will leave 2.2 GPUs idle and make it fragment to both task A, B, and C. Therefore, there is an increase in the fragmentation. On the other hand, if I schedule task A to node B, the node B becomes 0.7 GPU idle, but it can still host all the workloads uh, A, B, and C. There is no fragmentation increase at all. Uh, so we think uh, allocated to node B, uh, to GPU B is a better choice. Secondly, um, given the task B arriving, now if I allocate the task B to GPU, B, uh, GPU A, the GPU A will become totally utilized. Uh, and no GPU left, so there is no fragmentation. In fact, in this scenario, the, G the fragmentation actually decreases. And, but if I put it onto GPU B, it will still cause fragmentation to task A, B, and C. So I choose no a, uh, GPU A. And the third step, uh, it's impossible to put it on GPU A, so uh, per perfectly it fits into the GPU B and utilizes all the resources in the cluster. Uh, so you can find that such decision is not like best fit or worst fit because it's always switching between the uh, most uh, lefted or the least lefted um, the node. It's based on the uh, distribution of the task and the situation of the current cluster's available resources. So let's briefly introduce the implementation and go through the evaluation results quickly. Uh, we implement the fragmentation-based scheduler as a pluggable component in Kubernetes and leveraging the scheduling framework. Uh, besides, we also release a high-fidelity event-driven tr trace emulator that can either replay the traces collected, we also open source it, and also it can control of a real K Kubernetes cluster. The traces are created to Alibaba Group and a simulator has been released in the link. Uh, we find FGD outperform all the heuristics in many perspectives. Besides is the least amount of GPU fermentation mentioned before, the upper figure plus the number of unallocated GPUs during the scheduling, where all the policies plateaus after a certain amount of workloads arrived. FGD can host more workloads before reaching the saturation point. Third, 
the lower figure dep depicts the Occupy nodes during the allocation, while FGD packs the same group of tasks onto 250 fewer nodes. And also in the upper figure, the FGD can reduce the ultimate all unallocated GPUs, this here, ultimate unallocated GPUs by 33 to 49%, which utilize an ad additionally 150 and 290 GPUs compared to the best fit in other baselines. We also have evaluated GP FGD in a scheduling a wide variety of workloads, including trades with different proportion of GPU sharing workloads, multi-GPU workloads, GPU with uh, task with GPU hype constraints, or non-GPU tasks, respectively. All results have shown that FGD have gave the lowest wasted GPUs. So uh, to conclude, we starting from the background that allocating partial GPUs will result in severe fragmentation, and therefore we need a, it's a new challenge that cannot be addressed by using the existing uh, conventional bin packing approaches. So we propose a new fragmentation matrix measure the, unexpe the expected GPU resources and it cannot be allocated given a workload distribution, which also supports the breakdown analysis of the reason about the fragmentation. Based on this matrix, we design a scheduling heuristic called FGD, which is based on very simple idea, but it turns out to be very effective in reducing the unallocated GPUs. That's all about my talk. Thank you.